I love beauty, I love everything about it. I love the world of beauty, I love the power it has, I love the passion behind it, I love cosmetics, and I have been in the beauty industry in some capacity my entire career. So I actually started off as a makeup artist. I started off as a makeup artist and I was in college and I went to work at a uh, makeover photography studio. And that dates me a little bit, but I can see by your faces that it dates some of you all too. So who has ever had one of those photos taken, one of those glamour shots taken? Yes. That is how I started my career, as a part-time makeup artist. And I um, was talking about it a little bit yesterday, and was talking about a photo that I had done. And I called my husband, and I said, can you take out that photo that I took when I worked at Shooting Stars? So he did, so we can go, and I will show you my glamour shot. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. You better believe it. Oh, well, let me tell you, what I said, I don't know where they are, but can you dig that out of the, can you dig that out of the picture box? He goes, dig it out of the picture box, I got it right here. In my and I said, there is a time when you love those photos. Yes, so I have a, um, I have a winter wonderland photo, and I have a Christmas photo. There you go. Those earrings weigh about 25 pounds. So actually, funny, true story. So I worked there and I was a makeup artist, but um, they did those photos for like the Christmas special, right? And if you remember what those looked like, they, they used to do these giant window, like lit up deals where you know you couldn't help when you were walking past that you saw them. And they put that, they put that blue one up there along with that nasty before picture, you know, that they would take of you when you had no makeup on and bad lighting and everything else. And I kid you not, I would be standing right there at the desk. And this happened on a, not like occasional, but like a daily basis. And people would be standing there and they would be going, if they can do that to that woman, oh my God. I'm standing right there and they have no idea that it's me. No idea that it's me. Over and over and over again, it became a joke of the company. So, so why this was important, and it was an incredibly important, pivotal time in my life. I joke, and you can go back, by the way, to the, to the we've yeah. seen enough of that one. Uh, 20 years old. Uh, why that was so pivotal for me is I learned the power of beauty. I learned that when I was 20 years old, the power of beauty, and what kind of power we have when we can make women look but most, but more importantly, feel beautiful. And some of these women, they, women came in for a variety of reasons, a really wide variety of reasons. Sometimes it was their birthday, sometimes it was a special occasion, sometimes it was Valentine's Day and they wanted to do something for their significant other. But oftentimes, they were given this as a gift when they had done something important in their life. Maybe they they, they hit a goal of, of a certain amount of weight that they wanted to lose, or maybe they'd gone through a really rough time and someone gave this to them as a gift to give them a little pick-me-up. That actually happened quite a bit. And to see, the, to see how this, how looking beautiful affected women on the inside was powerful, really powerful. And these women were emotional when they saw themselves as beautiful. And for the first time, they felt beautiful for some of them. And I had no idea the power that making someone look beautiful on the outside could have on the inside. And I thought, I want to, I, I gotta be a part of this industry. I've got to be a part of this business. I was a nursing major at the time, and so it, it, it was a pretty big shift. So I decided I had to learn this business, and I actually ended up going to cosmetology school, which is the place that I knew of to learn how to really become a proficient makeup artist. My dad called it bubble bath school. He didn't quite understand the vision that I had, so it, he didn't call it that anymore, but he called it that then, and, and, and I, but I just knew. I knew that I had to be a part of this special, special industry, and I've been in it ever since. 
So I went to work um, as a trainer of makeup artists from there and went to work for a small independent cosmetic company and became a recruiter and a trainer and I learned something. So so first first career move, I learned the power of beauty. Second time I, I came to work, in the second career move, I came to work as a, as a trainer and I realized I love to teach. I love to teach this to people. I love to teach, and I, I was a recruiter for other makeup artists, and I love to lead. I realized for the first time, I love to tell people what I know and lead other people. And I know that that's why you all are here, for, for to learn leadership and the potential that you all have as leaders. And some of you already are there, very, very incredible, strong leaders. So I learned that with that one. Um, I was approached a few years later. I loved it. I thought, this is my calling. I'm going to be a platform artist. I'm going to spend my career teaching cosmetics and, and doing makeup professionally. And then someone approached me about moving into sales. And this was this is probably 15 years ago. Approached me about moving into sales. Talk about a completely different side of the brain, completely different everything. And I thought, no way. This is my calling. I'm here to teach. I want to do makeup. And I learned something really, really important. This person really, really pushed me. It happened to be my boss at the time. This, this individual really, really pushed me. And I learned something really valuable through that career choice. And that is believe in yourself. Sometimes when others believe in you and you don't necessarily believe in yourself, you have to stop that little voice. Mm -hmm. You have to stop that little voice that says, I'm nervous, I don't know what I'm doing, this is something completely new for me, I don't think that I can do this, and shut up that little voice yes. and listen to the confidence that other people have in you. Yeah. Because if someone believes that you can do it, sometimes even if you don't believe it, there's something there. So I really learned that valuable lesson, and I'll tell you, it was um, it was a it was a good move. I'm glad that I shut off that little voice. It was a good move. I hate this podium. <laughs> I'm gonna walk around this podium instead of standing next to the podium. So be open, be open to to, to ideas and, and things that others share with you. Another big thing that happened to me. So we, this little cosmetic company, got bought out a couple of times and eventually became part of Procter and Gamble PNG which was an incredible opportunity, I thought, to learn from an enormous beauty company, one of the biggest that there was out there, actually. And then something really interesting happened, which is kind of um, when, you know, big fish swallow little fish, it's, it's not that unusual, I know now, but um, my position was eliminated. And I was on the block. They, they called me in and offered me another job in a completely different area of the company or I could take a package and leave. And my, I, I was really upset, really upset. My ego was hurt. I thought I'd done all this in this company. How dare they? Don't they know what I've accomplished, what I've given to the company? And I'll tell you, I almost missed a really, really good opportunity to work for a, a, a company like P&G where I could learn so much. And so I learned from that experience to get over yourself and yes. get over your ego. Yes. And it is so often that our ego gets in the way of us moving forward and progressing and learning something because we can't get out of our own way. Mm -hmm. and, and see the forest through the trees and understand when an opportunity is right in front of us, but we can't, our ego gets in our own way. And so I, I almost, walked away from an incredible opportunity because I was wrong. I felt like I was wronged. So there's my learning there. Don't let your ego get in your way. Get past your own, get, get, get out of your own way. Um, I, uh, I was there for a while and learned a lot, learned a lot. And then I got called and had an opportunity to, um, and was recruited by a small little company called L'Oreal. <laughs> and I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. And um, it was a, it was a tremendous opportunity. And I was scared to death. It was an, it, they were things that I was uh, you know being recruited for that were completely foreign to me that were completely unknown. And I learned how to do something that was 11 years ago. 
and I learned how to do something at that point in my career that has helped me tremendously ever since and still does to this day. And that is to listen to my gut. To listen, to, we all have it. We all have that intuition. We might be scared to death but we all have that intuition when something feels right. And you know in your gut that it feels right. And there's all these things, you should list out the pros and you should list out the cons and you should do this comparative study and that's all good and that's all true. But when it comes down to it, your gut will usually tell you, call it your intuition, call it your spiritual guide, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it means in your life, that voice that tells you, yes, this is a good thing. And that's what I did, and I listened to my gut. I was scared to death. And, and someone told me a phrase, which has become something that, that I've always, that in the last 11 years I've lived by, and I have a plaque sitting on my desk at home that says it, and I love this saying. And the saying is, feel the fear, have the doubts, and then go for it anyway. Yes. All right. Go for it anyway. Thank you. So it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to doubt, but you just got to jump in. When it feels right, you just got to jump in. And so I went to work for L'Oreal, and it's been a tremendous 11 years. Um, learned a lot of things. Loved everything about that company in the beauty industry. And uh, most recently, for the last couple of years, I um, had the position of head of sales for two of L'Oreal's brands. L'Oreal has a lot of different brands that a lot of people don't even realize. I was, I was head of sales for two of L'Oreal's brands. And my offices were in New York. I don't live in New York. I actually live in Salt Lake City, and so I was actually commuting back and forth to New York every week. And it was taking a toll on my family. It absolutely was. And I have uh, four kids and two of them are at home, and a husband who I love and want to stay married to. <laughs> and there was really, a, 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 in the last few months, there has been a lot of conversation that my husband and I have had where we have been saying, is this what we're gonna do for the next 10 years? Is this what's right for our family? Because there's another saying that I actually live by that I love, and, and, and it's from a spiritual leader that I have, and it is the saying that no other success, no other success can, can compensate for failure in the home. Mm. And it's something that I believe in that I wasn't living, and that I, and that I wasn't living, and I, and I knew in my gut that I wasn't living, and so we've been having these conversations. I had a great career, I had a great job. I felt like I would retire at L'Oreal. And then Melanie called. <laughs> Actually, she texted. She texted. She didn't call. She texted. And it was one of those that had had she had she reached out two months earlier that I probably never even responded to the test. But it was that timing that I could not ignore it. That I knew that there was something that was meant to be. And once again, that gut felt like you got to see what she has to say. And it was interesting because when she texted, we were on vacation and we were sitting around with my husband's family at the lake. So we were all, all sitting around our beach chairs, and I had about four or five women that were various family members sitting next to me, and I said, hey, has anybody ever heard of Unique? Every single person sitting in that circle had heard of Unique. My sister-in-law whips out her fiber lash mascara. <laughs> Tracy, I told Tracy the story, and I told it yesterday. Melanie, if any of you ever have ever met Melanie, she's she's quite a personality. And so I texted her back and said, you know what, Melanie, I'd love to have lunch with you sometime. So that was my commitment to her to have lunch. And lunch turned into, well, I can't do lunch, so how about you just come over to the office? And that turned into about a two-hour meeting with Melanie, and then that turned into her marching me down to Derek's office. And before I knew what was going on, I'm sitting in Derek's office, and he says to me, did you bring your resume with you? And I went, Derek, all I can do is lunch. No, I don't have a resume with me. So, so from there, somehow I ended up at conventions. And I think that Melanie and Derek knew that all I had to do was start to meet these presenters and see these presenters. And they were right. So I was at a convention, I was trying really hard to hide, which I just, I'm just gonna be a fly on the wall, I'm just gonna sit there, I'm not gonna say a word to anyone. So this is the most friendly group of women I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and everyone asking me, who are you, what are you doing here, who's your sponsor, and I have my L'Oreal notebook, 
notebook that I'm taking notes on, you know, and I and I just sitting, and I'm just sitting there going, this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. And it was a tremendous, amazing group of women, and for me, that was really what sealed the deal. Woo! I, I I thought long and hard on the flight home, and and thought, how can I not be part of a company that believes what this company believes? And so the big learning and the and the big thing that I that I am. I've come away with that really was the decision maker for me is I've done a lot of great things. I've been able to do great things in business and grow sales and you know and, and grow companies and learn a lot. But this is the moment where I have an opportunity to make a difference. Yeah. Yes. To make a difference. And this company, when I found out that this company is about uplifting women and empowering women. This is a company that makes a difference. It absolutely is. And we do more than just sell mascara. That we make a difference. And when that really sunk in with me, and when I really realized that, I thought this is absolutely the right move. The right move, and I want to be a part of this company. And it was just one of the best things I've ever done. I have two weeks Woo! in, and I could not be more. I have struggled over the years with, um, and I talked to a couple of you who were here yesterday a little bit about this. I've struggled over the years of being in this industry that what is what what is my place? Where am I making a difference? Because we don't cure cancer, we sell mascara, and I I've, I've struggled with that over the years, and have really I believe have found a mission statement within myself, and if you haven't developed your own personal values and mission statement, I, I highly encourage you to do that, and it's a process, and you really have to look inside yourself and think, what, what am I accomplishing? What is my mission? And, and, and I realized a few years ago that my mission is to create beauty. It's to create beauty by empowering women, and in fact, that's, the, that's my exact personal mission statement, that I create beauty by empowering women and myself to realize their full potential. And so to come into a company that has this culture and has this mission statement that it's about that's about uplifting and validating and empowering women is something that I feel very honored and blessed and I think is pretty special. I think it's pretty special. So I, I I give credit to all of you that you saw this, that you saw this opportunity as well. And um, and and just would encourage you to think about how am I making a different in, difference in lives of people? Because to look beautiful is to feel beautiful. And I think that you are all so much more powerful than you realize. I really, really do believe that in that ability to make women feel beautiful inside, as well as, of course, the outside. So that that's that's my story. I hope to be able to, to, to I, I greet it and met a lot of you coming in with your beautiful, bright, smiling faces. And, I'll, and I hope to be able to do that throughout the course of the day and hear a little bit about each one of your stories. And so with that, I thank you and look forward to empower you today. Woo!